Uh, I got booked last minute to do some shows with uh, with Gabriel, uh, Fluffy. How does something like that happen? Because you've been doing comedy for how long? After high school, that's when like, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to give it a shot and be a comedian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did it literally just happen just like that? Like you were like, ah, I'm going to go to an open mic. And I'm like, dude, I'm fucking passing tickets out, dude. I need money, motherfucker. Like, I remember I was all fucking sad, bro. I was all like depressed. And I got out of the shower and I, uh, there was a missed call from like San Francisco. And I called back and they're like, is this Martin Rizzo? I'm like, yeah. How's it going? We have a uh, we have a check for you for $20,000. No. I'm moving out, motherfucker. This is the True Hustle Podcast with your host, JR. This is the True Hustle Podcast with your host, JR. It took you a while to get here. I know, man. I was, bro. It was an adventure, man. I drove all the way from Modesto. All the way from Modesto? All the, from Modesto to Downey. But why, though, bro? To do the podcast, dude. No, oh, but okay. why? But why were you in Modesto? That's what I'm trying to get at. Side chick city, homie. Oh wait, shit. No, no, just kidding. No, no. no, what's? No, my dad. I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> no, yeah, dude. Uh, I got booked last minute to do some shows with uh with Gabriel, uh, Fluffy. So, okay. How does something like that happen? Because you've been doing comedy for how long? A long time. You said muscle man. I don't, I don't age myself. I got oh, uh, 16 shit. years. <laughs> so I started when I was 10, bro. So you guys do the math. <laughs> you know? So then you just get a phone call like, hey, this is Gabriel. What's up, dog? You well, <laughs> like, how does that work? Uh, I mean, that, this was like, I mean, now it's like the feature. So uh, he, it was uh, Instagram. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. No, but it was Martin who hit me up. He's like, he asked me if I was available to do Bakersfield on Saturday. And I was like, uh, yeah, and I felt bad because I had to cancel a show with the homies, uh, Eric Ochoa and the... Uh, oh, yeah. shit, the homies assemble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, all right, all right. But, that, but, but he understood. He was like, oh, fuck yeah, go, go do it. And then we went out there. That was a secret show he did. Y luego, uh, he asked me, like, that night, hey, um, do you want to come do my show tomorrow in uh, Modesto? And I'm like... Yeah, yeah, and I had to cancel another show. <laughs> oh, fuck. I felt, you know, I feel bad. The uh, the Los Gas they they put together this uh, lucha libre goth uh, event. Okay. With a uh, goth house and uh, yeah, but uh, so sorry guys. Yeah. But, yeah it, you know he apologizes, but it was it's a big deal though, bro. Like yeah. to be, you know, fucking sharing the stage with a legend, like yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So it's like I, I think they're I think they understand. <laughs> Okay, so. but when you were on there, did you get a little bit nervous, dog? Um, yeah, because I mean, I'm just like, uh, I got, I mean, of course, I always get nervous when I'm like when I'm about to perform, but especially when you know, like, we like, because I mean, I've known Gabriel for a long time, but like, uh, like it's probably it's probably been like a long time since like uh, I did a show with him, so it's probably like it must have been like probably like ten years since the last time I, we did a show together. Damn. So I was like nervous, like oh shoot, dude, and then uh, what's it called? Yeah, dude, uh, it was fun. Uh, it went good. And yeah, but I got nervous because I've never seen kids at the shows, you know, because he has oh, kids, oh, you know? Fuck. Yeah, yeah. So, like, there's kids. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay. And then, uh, yeah, but, but it went good, man. Okay. When there's kids. I cuss you, more, bro. That's what I'm saying. So, like, some of, some of your jokes are, like, you know, not for kids, right? I, I mean, any comedian, right? Yeah. So, sometimes they're kind of, you know. You know, a little bit crazy, right? So, do you have to pivot on, like on the spot? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, adjust. I had to adjust, you know. And that's what threw me off. Just like seeing the kids, like, oh shit! Like, there's like there's kids actually like go. I, I've never been to a comedy show as a kid. I barely went to comedy shows, you know. Like, like I never went to a comedy show as a regular person before I started doing comedy. <laughs> so, a yeah. regular person <laughs> as a regular civilian, bro. You know. So, so then. When how old were you when you went to your first comedy show, or what made you fall in love with comedy? That you're like, oh shit, this is the bitches, bro. <laughs> nah, man, there's no bitches, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I always wanted to do it, man. Like since <laughs> I was a kid, I used to watch like my favorite thing was watching like the Conan O'Brien, the you know those stand up segments, mm -hmm. and yeah, and I was like, oh dude, I, I want to try it out. So like in high school, I was writing jokes, you know, I was writing jokes in high school, like in, in a notebook. I was like, I'm gonna do stand up. And then uh, when I uh, when I graduated high school that summer, I uh, started uh, going to open mics because I started looking up online. And then Laugh Factory uh -huh. was my first time going up. Uh, improv open mic. And I remember the I couldn't go inside the comedy store yet because I wasn't twenty one yet. So I had to okay. 
wait outside. Then it was my turn for the open mic. Go in there, tell my jokes, and then get out again. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah it was crazy, man. Fuck. So, okay. Straight out of high school. Or yeah. when you Straight were in. Straight out of Compton. Oh, we ain't shit. So, then this happened. When did you discover, like, damn, you know what? I'm pretty funny. Like, was it, like, were you, like, a class clown or not really. I, nah. I was more like funny, like around my friends, but like never like like a class clown. You know, I think it was like my last year of high school when I was kind of like became more. I came out of my shell more because I went to continuation high school. Oh, she. I actually went to high school for five years. I went to three whoa, proms, whoa, homie. Whoa, 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 three whoa. proms, bro. What high school did you go to? Century High School in Alhambra. Oh shit! And you were there five years. Five? No, no, no. I went to regular high school, Alhambra High School, for like. Three years and I just fucked up so much, bro. I just ditched school. I didn't give a fuck, dude. Oh, My you mom was a man. fucking thug, fool? Bro, I wasn't a thug, dude. <laughs> I was just a skater kid, bro. And I, I used to just go ditch, skate, bro. And then uh, it was fun. I mean, because we live in SoCal, man. So, like, when you ditch, it's perfect weather. And, and it's funny because, like, uh, I was my friend. Um, No, no, I, I did show. I remember one time I did a show in fucking... I think in Chicago was so fucking cold. And I was like, dude, if I ever lived here, I would have never ditched school. Because <laughs> you don't want to be in class with a heater. Exactly. With dude. Cause heater I, on. Bro, because out here we have the beaches. We have Disney. We have Six Flags. We have everything, dude. Man, we, you, when you ditch, you can just go to anywhere, bro. Like, it's perfect to be a ditcher here. Hell, yeah. yeah. There's so many things to do here. Yeah, when you You're ditch. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so then you was ditching and you was doing all kinds of. Uh, I don't know. You were just doing some kind of crazy shit. Escape. And and then I went to continuation high and school. And then you went to continuation. Continuation high school is like a uh, purgatory. Cause you see people I haven't seen there in a long time, man. I remember like remember like the girl that like gave everybody hand jobs in the back of the classroom. Or the or the guy that started like lighting fires, a oh, cholo. Shit. Or the or the the, the the guy that fought the, the the cholo that fought the teacher. And they disappear. Like, I don't know what the fuck happened. That fool and then, in jail, dog. Yeah, yeah. And then years later, you see them there. Like, the, the girl's pregnant now. Like, you know, like, it's crazy, bro. It's like, that's how it is out there, bro. Continuation uh, high how the hot girls are fucking in continuation school pregnant. Dude, fuck. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. My high school is ghetto, bro. Because, like, there be fucking gangsters that didn't go to that school. They jump the fence to fight people at my school and they jump and leave. Damn, fool, that's HP shit right there, dog. Right I grew there. up in HP. Oh, that, that shit like, would happen. Yeah, really? Like other and like people. some grown ass fools too. <laughs> like what the fuck? Like, bro, you're gonna jump the fence to fight a fucking seventeen year old, and you're like twenty three. Dude, that's insane. Like, how do you have beef with a fucking seventeen year old kid, right? Fuck, dog. So, <laughs> that's crazy, but. I mean, that's the way it is, you know? Yeah, my high school is crazy because, like, the other high school. Because people think Alhambra is, like, nice and shit like that. But, like. I think Alhambra is nice. People think. But, but you got to think about, like, the surrounding cities, too. Like, because you have, like, right there East LA. You have El Sereno, El Monte. And then, like, also, like, uh, Rosemead. And, like. But, like, also Alhambra, like, just because it looks nice. There's, like, some ghetto people there, man. Um, all the Asian gangs, bro. Active, too, huh? Yeah, dude, active, bro. Not, not, not MS thirteen, MSG thirteen, homie. You know, damn, cause oh, fucking yeah. blood pressure, and they got money to buy like, all kinds yeah. of guns and shit. Yeah, dude, oh. yeah, <laughs> they have money to buy nice cars. They can, those are perfect getaway cars, man. <laughs> In the so hood, then, the car breaks down, you try to get away. You know? So then, how did you stay away from all that shit? Skater, bro. I hung out with the punks. I hung out with the punks. But also, the punks did a lot of crystal meth too. So like. I was just a skater Damn, kid. Bro. I mean, no me llamaba esa la atención, you know? Like, I didn't... Uh, the punks the punks and the cholos united because they used to do meth together. And I used to just hang out with the skaters, the goth people, the, and uh, hang out with the cholos here and there. And that's when I started tagging. I was a tagger, bro. You were a tagger, fool? Everybody was a tagger, dude. Skater slash tagger, but no to meth. <laughs> no, no, exactly, that, no. Damn, fool. <laughs> so then you utilize skating... Yeah. As your like savior, like nah, nah, I don't want to smoke, man. I'm gonna go fucking skate, and bust some tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's how it was, man. I I was a skater boy, dude. I just ditched. I just, I mean, I'm still, I still love skateboarding to this day. You know, I still, I still use it to try keep uh, fit and like active. Well, I see you busting tricks on Instagram, and I'm like, uh, fuck, I would, I would break my shit. Dog, <laughs> if I try to do some shit like that, bro. <laughs> it looks, it looks difficult, dog. 
Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for like a long time, but I mean, I, I can teach you, man. Oh, fuck, I have two fractured angles. No, I'll start with the list, fool. It's <laughs> over, dog. Mm. So then after that, after high school, that's when like, hey, you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to give it a shot and be a comedian. Yeah. Yeah, did, yeah. Did it literally just happen just like that? Like you were like, ah, I'm going to go to an open mic. Well, what happened was like, I remember like, because uh, I had a job, so... um. I had two jobs, so like uh, this is like my super senior year, you know, like uh, the fucking dude, I, dude. There are so many super seniors on my high. Super hind- senior, could you explain to people what a super senior is? <laughs> it's a guy. It's when you're in high school for more than four years, you know. Bro, I was like, yeah, dude. There's like, I was like, dude, if I'm here more, I can, I, I'll be able to buy you guys beer in a couple years. I'm, I'm still <laughs> here. So, the oldest guy to graduate from my high school, Century High School, was 23. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. But that was the continuation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck, dog. They had adults. Yeah, exactly, dude. He had lunch in the fucking in the break room with the teachers. I don't know if he no, did, but <laughs> man. And then I became a I became a so I remember uh summer before I went to my super senior year, um, I was ready uh to get extra credits. I was uh I was doing like janitor work after school, right? Mm-hmm. And then after that, they told me, "Hey man, you can get you can get paid for this too." I'm like, "Oh fuck yeah, dude!" So uh, that ended up becoming I got I got promoted to an actual employee. Yeah, it was crazy. I was telling the kids, "Please don't please, please don't litter, guys. I got to clean after." So you went from super senior to super employee. Super employee, bro. Yeah. So you was getting paid. I was getting paid. I was cleaning the classroom, and it was a small school, so I was cleaning the classrooms. You know, it was chill, dude. Sometimes I go sleep in the restroom for like a long time, dude. I was, dude. <laughs> I go. I go to the break room when the teachers were gone. I steal hoagies from the fridge, bro. Fuck. Nasty ass hoagies too. They're all frozen. <laughs> and then, uh, what up, man? It was it was crazy. Yeah, being the janitor in my high school, man. So. so you being a super senior and all that shit. Like, what was your mom and your dad telling you? My mom, my, uh, like they were like, "Hey, cabron." Well, my mom, she had to go to Mexico for like a while to go take care of my grandma. So okay. in my, and my dad, I, I, uh, I don't, I never li- lived with them, you know. But uh, my mom, when she went to Mexico for like a long time, I was staying at my at my aunt's house uh, right there, like by the Sereno. And when you ditch school, they call, but nobody was home, you know, for fucking six months, bro. I ditched so much, man. It was crazy. So then you were like, I, mean, I don't want to say on your own because you were with your aunt yeah but your dad wasn't around yeah and your mom was in mexico yeah so, so technically you were just like a, you were just like a, a youngster uh hoodlum but, I, but I wasn't doing anything bad that doesn't i wasn't doing anything bad you know i was just <laughs> i was just skating and that's it you know but a lot of the kids in my that, that uh what's it called there's a lot of bad kids in my fucking so do you think that contributed to it like your circumstances and you were like, ah, fuck it. I'm just going to ditch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. You think was, that would kind of gave you like, ah, it was. It was easy. It. Yeah. But you know what? What did stop me too was um, I, I did, uh, I got caught shoplifting, man. Oh, shit. Yeah. Tell me about that, dog. Where? Bro, Target, dude. Tar- this was Target? Target, bro. This was back when they fucking, <coughs> when they stopped you, bro. Like if they, if I did that now, bro, it'd be, I mean, because <laughs> now they don't even stop you, bro. You know? Now they just be like, hey. <laughs> don't come back. Yeah, yeah don't come back. <laughs> fucking just. Mm, thank you, Gavin Newsom. <laughs> bro, I used, man, I remember that. So like, we were. This was like the year before we went to a uh, high school. So it was like the eighth grade before. So summer school, we were going to. Uh, we we're just ditching, bro. Me and my cousin, and then my other friends. We we're going to Target. We we're stealing tech decks. We we're stealing CDs, bro. And then we kept coming back because it was so easy, you know. You don't come back when you fucking shoplift, you know. You don't. <laughs> you stop shoplifting when you get caught. Exactly, dude. So we kept going back, man, because all oh, this is easy, bro. And then fucking, I guess they, they people, the people kept seeing us, right? And then uh, I guess the fourth day, going back to go steal there, we we're walking out, and this one guy stopped us that just was reg- wearing regular clothes. Like, hey, cover. Exactly, dude. Fucker. Motherfucker, dude. So he's like, hey, go back inside. And after that, uh, they took us to his room and they started showing us like <laughs> the footage. And my cousin kept denying, I don't, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. And I was all put, I was all scared. Adrian, just tell him you did it, bro. And, and me, bro. So I remember um 
they let me and my friends go. They kept my cousin Adrian. We're waiting outside Target. Like, when is he gonna get out? When is he gonna get out? And then I see my aunt driving in the car. I fucking oh, jump in the duh. bushes, bro. I jump in the bushes, dude. And I'm and I go home right to my house, which is not too far from there. So Target right there uh, in Alhambra, the one that's like right there. Uh, I think I know where that's on Main at. Street. Okay, so. My cousin would always come with me home to my mom's house, you know, and that my uh-huh. aunt would pick him up out there. And then she was like, where's Adrian at? Oh, he's coming. <laughs> ah, I was all downstairs fucking nervous. And then she came out like 30 minutes later. Where, where's Adrian at? Oh, he, uh, he's just, you know, doing something. And she's like. <laughs> ah. And after that, uh, I hear a phone ring. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. This is it. And then, yeah. My mom, my mom, my mom never hit me. But oh, she was disappointed at me. Like she like that feels worse than getting hit. You know, like please hit me. You know, like chinga me. Mete me una putiza, pero don't be like that. Don't look like that. <laughs> yeah. You're making me feel bad. It reminds me like the Simpsons when uh, March finds out that Bart stole uh, the video game. Remember? Damn, it broke her heart. Huh? Uh, it broke her heart. But I felt, and after that, I was like, no more stealing from Target, bro. Just fucking. Just Walmart now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So then she got upset, but then. I think that was probably like a reality check for you, huh? It like, was, yeah. yeah. Was like, I can't. If I would have kept doing this, so I remember I did so much that like, um, I was uh, when I tried to go back to uh, my mom's like, you better start going back to summer school, and I w- try to go back to summer school, the class, and the teachers like, you've been ditching so much, like we just uh, kicked you out of the system, like, but I, but I need to be here, and then she's like, you can be here, but you're not gonna get any credit. So I went to fucking class. Uh, summer school for like an extra uh two the remaining month uh-huh. without getting any credit just doing the work just because I want because I I was scared bro you know fuck so you got no credit no bro so you was just there because I was scared dude I was like yeah like like chingue wacky or but yeah huh. but I started ditching after later on so <laughs> but not stealing anymore yeah but you still managed to graduate a year uh like five like uh, five years yeah five years in five years in Better baby never fool <laughs> like at least you did it. Exactly, bro. I went to three proms, like I said, bro. Damn, fun. I didn't go to no proms. Mm? Bro. Yeah. Let's yeah, take was, you, man. I used to ditch a lot too, fool. But I, I didn't qualify to. See, you guys call it super senior. I was a a demo. It was called demo. Demoted. So it's like you were a 10th grader. Um, for me, I was supposed to be a senior, but I was a 10th grade demo or some shit like that. It was I was demoted. That means I didn't fucking pass to the 11th or the 12th. I was supposed to be in 12th, but I was a 10th grader. So you graduate later too? No, I graduated on time, but I had to make up for all the bullshit. Oh, shit. I had to take college classes. It was a mission, bro. Uh, what high school did you go to? Oh, funny that you ask. <laughs> I went to HP High, Bell High, Southgate oh. High, uh, Odyssey Continuation, uh, and then I went back to Southgate High and I graduated. To all the gate cities, right? Is that what it's called? Uh, no, Southgate. No, I went to HP, Southgate, Bell. Or, to, isn't to, it called the Gateway Cities or no? no? Am I tripping? No, that's like just like South. Uh, Is it called the Gateway Cities? That's Cause a good I, Because I've seen every time. No, you know what? I think it's because when I go to Alhambra, <coughs> I see the Gateway Cities like the uh, on the on the bridge. I don't think so. No. I mean, you could be right. Shit, I'll find out. Let me see. The Gateway Cities. But I went to all those, bro. Wow. I picked out all of them. I used to ditch a lot too. I used to, I used to do a lot of stupid, sh- stupid ass shit. Gang stuff or what? Uh, I was involved in a little bit of that, a, l- a little bit of st- fucking. Was I'm, it not party? Prou- I'm not proud of any of this, but yeah, uh, we were just smoking, doing a bunch of stupid ass shit. Not the other stuff, the hard stuff. Not just stealing weed. Oh, okay. like, yeah. like we didn't steal. We just wanted to get fucked up. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, drinking? Some, yeah, drinking, oh, cool. smoking, just regular stuff. <laughs> You guys have party crews? There was party crews. There was ditching parties. The, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was a little bit too much for us, though. We did a little bit too much, but I graduated Hell on yeah, time. Dude. That's what counts, man. Hell did yeah. you go to college? I went to college for a bit, man. Uh, East LA College. East LA? Yeah. Nah. You like, bro? Nah. You like, homie? You're yeah. a husky fool? Husky, bro. Well, uh, <laughs> you husky, too? Oh, Cerritos. Oh, <laughs> shit. All right. Husky, Let me bro. ask this question, Mr. Cerritos. What's a better college, East LA College or Cerritos College? I, see, I, 
for skateboarding, bro? East LA College, bro. I'm fucking telling you, dude. East LA College is the place. I mean, I don't know about academia, bro, because I'm fucking, I'm not a smart. That's my, because every time we see your clips on this podcast and you're, it's like a, what's it called? Financial advice. I'm like, dude, yeah. fucking like, I, dude, I'm on the most wanted list out of like saw, bro. I don't, I don't the worst guy I have on this thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just came. I just I just drove five hours with no AC, bro, because my car's fucked up. I'm the worst guy to ask about financial. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about financial. Fuck, no, you say. But I, but I'll tell you the story when uh uh financial stuff not to do or like uh what to do, you know. But like um I remember uh, so when I did this commercial for the Super Bowl in 2011, uh-huh. uh, I got booked to do the, the, the Super Bowl commercial. It was uh, for McDonald's commercial, right? Nah. Yeah. And so I met this agent at the, at the John Lovitz Comedy Club. It's not there anymore. It was like years ago. It was right there in City Walk. You let go. Um, so this guy came up to me. He's like, hey, man, you're funny. I want to sign you to my agency. Fuck yeah, dude. So he sent me to a couple auditions. I did an Audi commercial. Then I did the McDonald's. These are pretty quick. I was like, dude, I was young. I was like fucking like 21 or something like that. You luego, uh, I did the McDonald's commercial. My first time doing any kind of acting stuff like this. They gave me my check. To me, I'm like, this is normal. This, this is like, this is, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. You made it on check in the, the, like $2,000. I didn't know any better. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And then when I got my W, uh, what was it called? Your W9? W9 or your W2? W9, I think. No, okay. Yeah. And it shows you, you know, how much money you made and stuff like that. For no, that's year. W2. Fucking shit. <laughs> w2. W2. Yeah, you're right. W2. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Confuse them, bro. Confuse all the W's. <laughs> it sounds the same, fool. It is, dude. And then uh, I got the W2s, right? And then uh, I decided to look at you for, you know, the, that year. Uh-huh. And it said I made fucking $25,000 for the McDonald's commercial. What? So they gave me their they gave me their uh, percentage, you know. They gave me Dang. their cut and they kept my cut, and I'm like what the fuck. So then I was like I was trying to contact them. I contact so their studio. I mean their 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 offices. It was called I'll say the name Sylvia Ferguson. Uh, uh what's it called agency. It was uh it was ran by this uh one Mexican lady and this uh-huh. one black guy. There they used to be a couple. And then they separated, but they were still doing the business. And my friend's like, bro, you should have uh, never do business with a with a Mexican or a fucking uh, a black guy, bro. You should have got a Jewish guy, dude. Ah, <laughs> shit, a Jewish guy might be, might be worse. <laughs> shit. So then they, I called the offices. So the offices was right there at the Universal Studio, the Universal Building right there. Uh, Next to the Universal City Nissan? Yeah, yeah, right there. Oh, shit. On the freeway right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which ones. Yeah, yeah. So like... Of course, it's like, it seems legit, bro, because I used to have pinche, la pinche oficina. And I call, and they're like, oh, uh, they went out of business. Like, what the fuck, dude? They went out of business? So then. What the yeah. fuck? So then I went online, and there's like these forums with other people that were uh, represented by the same agency. There's this guy who's, who's his kid, uh, what's it called? His uh, kid, uh, they stole money from him, too. This one lady, they stole money from her, too. So a whole bunch of people were getting screwed over by this fucking agency, right? So they gave you... They're... they're $2,000. Out of $20,000. And after... I Because I did another commercial with them, you know? So, yeah. They gave me $2,000, and they kept, they kept like, the rest. So it's, like, basically, it's como the agency fee, you know? Mm-hmm. Y luego... I found a whole bunch of people on these forums that were like fucking uh, or in Facebook too that were like screwed over, screwed, over, screwed over by the fucking agency. Then after that, we met me and my mom. Uh, my mom was helping me too because she still don't know how that runs. She, she she wants money too, bro. You know, montan mis veinte mil dólares, cabrones. Wow, that's crazy. So then fucking. Uh, we meet up with this guy to switch uh, to exchange for her information, right? Uh-huh. This guy whose kid uh, they stole money from. They get, he gave us his uh their ad, the lady's address right, so I went to uh, Van Nuys Police Station so I can so I start we start looking up all this like what to do so to have them serve right uh-huh. so because basically I, I I oh so to have them serve right I went to the the sheriffs or who does that the sheriffs or the deputy? the sheriffs do the ser- no serving the serving I think anybody could serve them yeah, yeah. civilians. Are, they pay somebody to go serve you. Boom. So, but I had to go through like the the police. I, yeah, probably because it was a robbery, bro. You know? Oh shit! So they gave her the subpoena, bro. The subpoenas, homie. <laughs> the subpoenas. Toma perra. So <laughs> they get they got her right. 
And then she messaged me on Facebook. She's like, hey, Martin. Um, oh, no, no. It, 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 paso tempo, right? So I went through. Uh, I had to. We set up like a court date because okay. I was. We went. So we basically went deep. So basically, I was an employee of the state of California. And they owe me money, right? And for uh, for situations like that, there is like a, a savings bond of fifty thousand dollars from mm-hmm. like cuando pasa cosas así, right? Okay. So this is financial advice to get your fucking money, you know. And then, so there's a reserve of like that much money for uh per for talent like stuff like that. Si pasa cosas así. Okay. Y luego, time passed, and after that, we got a court date, right? To go to court, and then uh, in Long Beach, like a hearing, right? Uh-huh. To see, you know, like uh, a ver qué va a pasar, right? So leading up to that, uh, that lady messaged me on Facebook. She's like, hey, Mario, no, we don't have to go through uh, legal, what's it called? Uh, what's it called? We don't have to go to th- through this litigation. Exactly, through the legal, legal ad- I can't fucking think what's said. We, we, like, we don't have Legalities? to do this legality stuff in court. Yeah, How yeah, about yeah. I just give you this much? Did she say that? You go, Let's just meet up in person <laughs> and we'll talk about it. I'm like, Bitch, I've seen Selena, bro. You're gonna shoot. Ah, shit. She's gonna do Yolanda, bro. <laughs> yeah? She's gonna do Yolanda, you fall. And then what happened? Y luego, después, we had the court hearing, right? So it was for her to show up and the guy to show up, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't show up. Which I, is good for you. I automatically won the case. Yes. Right? And they're like, all right, congratulations. Yolanda pasó por como, like, probably like a year, almost a year, right? And I remember, um, I was at Flappers Comedy Club, right? So I used to kind of do like a lot of uh, I used to do a lot of like uh, like work around there to kind of like get money because I wasn't mm-hmm. working; I was just doing comedy, and I would do like little like background work, you know, for like music videos. And I remember uh, I used to pass out tickets for Flappers Comedy Club. So like you put your initials, and for every person that comes, these are free tickets. You know, hey, there's a free show going on, and for every ticket that they bring back with your initials, they give you a dollar. Dude, I used to hustle out there, bro. Because it's right there, the Burbank up by the okay. Burbank movie theater, the AMC. I, it's a little cool little plaza. Okay. Wait, I, I was there fucking hustling, bro, <laughs> all day, bro. And I get, I get like, fucking money, you know, like, for that. And they give me a free meal. I used to be a DJ at the Wait, at the comedy uh, club. I used DJ to play, too? I used to play the music in between, bro. So, those, like, it wouldn't pay that much money to do, like, the DJing because they would measure me. Hey, can you, uh, are you available to uh, DJ to play music between comedians? I'm like, fuck yeah. So there'd be like three shows, right, a night. I DJ every show. So you just play the music between comedians, right? Uh-huh. They give me five minutes each show. So, so te imaginas, te daban, so te daban 40 dollars just for, to do that. A free meal, which is actually good food at Flappers, and three st- three uh, five-minute spots. That's a comedian's dream, bro. And I was like fucking damn, 21. Full free food, money, and oh, stage damn. time, bro. Oh, full, you were fucking... That sounds, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing yeah. right now still, too, you know? Like, <laughs> wow, dude. Especially with the fuck, how expensive food is. Yeah, dude. Oh, my gosh. And it was really good food. They had, like, Flappers is, like, probably the first comedy club to, like, really uh, up the game for comedy club cuisine, bro. Because they had, dude, it was, like, gourmet, good pizza, spinche teniana, y, uh, como se llama, you know, French dips, bro. Damn, fuck. So I used to hustle there a lot. And I remember, like, como, I used to, like, I kind of, like, Started like doing a, like, as just going up and said like kind of online marketing like back then you know because like mm-hmm. I, I I've always like it's like probably the beginning of it beginning of it before people really started doing it online because it was like in 2011 2012. And oh, remember, that's when everything was popping off though. Yeah, but like that's Instagram. Yeah, now, yeah, everything right. And I remember one time I was just como I was uh, right there just waiting for the show to start. I wasn't performing. I was just like kind of hanging out there and I was just like in the in the showroom. And there's just music playing, and they're like, all right, guys, the show's going to start. And I was thinking, like, how to make money, bro. Lo, I was like, how come there's, like, no trailers before um, here, like, you know, like, to show, you know, like, the upcoming events, right? So I went home that night. I looked up the calendar. I got clips of the comedians. I got, like, 1920s music because that's, like, kind of, like, uh, their theme, you know, like uh-huh. the Flappers era. I showed the food, you know, and stuff like that. So I put the video together. And I showed the owner of Flappers, and he was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. This is great. Oh, I, we love this. You know, like, okay, send me an invoice. So what you can do is bring a DVD. This is also bringing DVDs. I could have. This, this, YouTube was out already, bro. I was bringing DVDs. Like, all right, 
bring <coughs> every week bring a DVD. Uh, what's it called? Uh, invoice us, and then and he, the guy, the owner, is excited. He's like, "Go get whatever you want from the kitchen," you know, like. Uh, Hell, you do. And I was broke ass. Dude, I was broke. I was like, damn, you know, and like, it wasn't that much money because I didn't know. It was my first fucking job like that. And then that kind of like got me into like, uh, like my little like, uh, digital marketing, like hustle, you know, like working for companies, you know, and like from then on, I come on. I remember one time I, uh, I went to the Halloween club. You know, remember the Halloween club that used to be right there off the Where? five freeway? I think so. It was like, it was right there by Knott's Berry Farm. Okay. Okay. So I remember I went to, uh, I, I dropped off a resume at the Halloween Club in by uh, U, UCLA. Hello, I went for an interview, and it, they, uh -huh. they they're trying every, uh, they're trying to hire me as just like a regular employee. I'm like, oh no, I, I want to do videos, and I show them videos. They're like, all right, cool, cool. And, and that's when the the the, the fucking uh, what are those the Robo skateboards? Come see man, the fucking hoverboards. Oh shit, okay. That's when the hoverboards were first coming out, and he's like, all right. Dress up and the, and, the, and the owner, cool Pakistani guy, and he was, oh, these are funny videos. Okay, let's do this. Um, you dress up, make some funny videos, and showcase the hoverboard in my videos. And then after that, people were buying. People were interested because they never seen the hoverboards. You know? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So I used to make videos for a Halloween club. I used to go that one and this one right here and just make videos and post them. And and you took the initiative though. Like, I, I went like, to go fucking like let me make up this job. You know, like yeah. And that's what started like the freelancing stuff then, kind of. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, illegal. Uh, but that that Pakistani guy was so cool, dude. This guy was like, "All right, I'll give you a uh, hundred bucks per video, and if it makes me laugh, I'll give you an extra fifty bucks." Super cool guy. And what? Yeah, and the Halloween the Halloween club that's right here, the other one on Montebello off the five, right there by Downey, right here, like the the one that it was right what? here. The Halloween Club, like right here by uh, by Commerce Casino, te acuerdas? It was like it was like it was just like right there the whole time, and during Halloween, during Halloween I'm time. Trying to think, yeah, yeah? okay. It seemed like un chingo de tráfico allí, like it was crazy the five freeway. So, oh shit, the five freeway. And these guys were so cool. These two Pakistani brothers, porque these guys were like, uh, cuando había un chingo de personas allá dentro, uh, uh -huh. Halloween, uh, the Halloween Club. There was uh two hot dog ladies selling hot dogs outside. And they didn't kick him out because, like, they're not messing with our business, you know? They're not no messing with out. And then they would go eat the hot dogs right there, <laughs> like, with the with the, with the vendors. Yeah. And these are so cool, man. Extra you know, like, Ooh, that sounds fire. Super cool, yeah. So, but, oh, okay, they see? So going back to the... Oh, yeah, the, the, my money, yeah. Did you get it back? So I'm going to tell you. Oh, hell yeah. I so that's why I was talking about me uh, working at Flappers. So I remember I was uh, passing tickets out there. I was, uh, it was nighttime. And then I'm like, I look up and I was about to pass it to this one guy, and it's that black guy, you know, who was part of the agency. And, he was, and we're all both, oh, oh. He goes, oh, hey, Martin, uh, how's it going? How you been? I'm like, and my head, I'm like, dude, I'm fucking passing tickets out, dude. I need money, motherfucker. <laughs> like, you know? And I'm like, oh, it's cool. And after that, uh, it was weird. And after I started walking back to the club, dude, I ran. I was scared, dude. He was going to fucking kill me, dude. So he's just there. Yeah, he was he was walking around the shopping center, you know, and we ran into each other. It was weird, bro. And this was during like the whole uh, what's it called? Waiting to see que va pasar con mi dinero. Y luego, I remember I was all fucking sad, bro. I was all like depressed, and I was taking a shower. You know, when you're like trying to think of ideas, and I got out of the shower, and I, I there's a missed call from like San Francisco, and then uh, uh, and I called back, and they're like, "Is this Martin Rizzo?" I'm like, "Yeah." How's it going? We have a uh, we have a check for you for twenty thousand dollars. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? No, I'm moving out, motherfuckers. You know, I'm moving out. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And after that, they're like, we're gonna send it. Y luego, uh, what's it called? I mean, it took like fucking like a long ass time. You know, I told my mom. You know, uh, she was all excited. See, give me a comprar, mijo. <laughs> and then fucking it, so it took a while, right? And then and when I got when I finally got the check, bro. I went to the when I went to the the bank. Uh, I was looking for the cutest teller, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I get these you, all the time. You were flexing, yeah, dude. You had to, bro. Just one commercial, <laughs> no biggie. Damn fool. I get these all the time, baby. <laughs> you let go of, yeah. So I deposited, bro. But then what happened was my fucking they froze my bank account, dude. Why? Cause bro, cause like, how the fuck am I gonna be like overdraft negative eighty dollars all the time? And then all of a sudden, twenty grand. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Like, how long did they freeze it for? 
like for like uh, like two weeks, you know, two weeks. They're like, okay, what the fuck's going on here, man? Where'd you get this from? You know, like, what the fuck's going on? But then everything they they verified everything. You know, like, oh, I got your money, bro. I was like, what you spend your money on, dog? First Say thing, the truth. First thing I did, bro. Um, I compré. I bought myself a phone. You know. Uh, a smartphone because I, I had like shitty fucking hand me downs from like other comedians. Okay, when was this? 2013. So I, ha I had so iPhone thir iPhones were out. Were Androids, out. but I had like I had like shittier like smartphones, you know, because it was like hand me downs from other comedians, okay. you know. Y luego, uh, I bought a phone. Then after that, I gave my mom some money, my aunt too. Y luego, uh, I w my first meal. I remember it was uh, this one deli next to the Laugh Factory in Hollywood called uh, Greenblatt's Jewish Deli. Fucking, I got a turkey leg, bro, with the with the with the cranberry sauce, some papita, the 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 little skinny fries with the fucking parmesan, the truffle, fancy ass food. I had to, bro, and yeah, and that was my first meal, dude. And what did you do with the rest of the money? And this is I'm gonna tell you guys, dude. Say the truth, I didn't have that shit, bro. I didn't have a job. I went. That money went. Se se acabó en un año, pero sabes qué? Aprendí. I was like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Para la próxima, homie. Yeah. <laughs> Voy a invertir. ¿sabes? ¿Sabes qué? I enjoy these 20 grand, but I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of Parmesan fucking fries. But I learned for the next one. <laughs> but it was cool because that commercial, Um, they kept playing. Uh, I remember uh, like years, like probably like years later in 2016, I remember uh, I got a call from uh, Chicago, which was like where like the main... Uh, the main studio that produced the commercial and they're like, yeah, how's it going? Um, Russia is trying to play your commercial. Uh, they're trying to play the commercial because the commercial had no dialogue. So it was very universal. Um, but the thing is we can reach an agent. So we couldn't reach the original people the, the, who, uh, who booked the thing. Oh, they're in jail. Yeah. yeah I know. Right. I don't know what the vibe happened to them. So we're like, so we just uh, decided to like seek the talent on Facebook and they, they reached me and they're like, so uh, how much do you want uh, for this? And I was like, uh, what the fuck? I don't know how. And I was like, oh, I was like trying to be like, oh, 20,000. Like, no, no, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they pay me 20,000. <laughs> and then after that, uh, we, uh, we, uh, agreed to, uh, we, uh, negotiated to, uh, $8,000, which was not bad. For one fucking commercial. Yeah, yeah. So it was like the How come you didn't start doing more commercials? I did do other commercials, but though, yeah, I would not commercials don't pay much like that, like that anymore. You know, Pagan Como Antes would come with streaming and all that. So it's not the same anymore, man. Do you think the, the streaming, streaming and like the social I, media? I think the, come on, the, the lifespan of like a commercial isn't as long as it used to be before, you know? Cause I've done other commercials before that. Like it, it was like 5,000, 6,000. Cause the last big commercial I did was like an Apple commercial. And that was like, that was like $6,000. You did an Apple commercial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like iPhone Apple? Yeah. Or it, it, Apple? <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it, was, it was for a tablet commercial. That's yeah. cabron, fool. Yeah, yeah. It That's was a, it, fool. Yeah, in this commercial, um, so it was, uh, they had to uh, find a couples, right? That were like, uh -huh. uh, what's it called? And at the time, I was single. And then they're like, oh, we need, these are, this is for couples. So then I had homegirl come in and we pretend to be a couple. And uh, what's it called? And even we still stuck to the fucking script even when we started shooting the commercial. And then, and then the the director's like, you guys don't have to, like, fake being a couple. I know what's up. And, <laughs> and what you say? Oh, fear me, fool. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and the, the director was the guy from uh, Lonely Island. The the skinny guy? Where are those? I think so. Jizz think so. in my pants. Oh, shit. Those guys from SNL, they did all those music videos. So, yeah. Damn, so me and Homegirl crazy. had to like make out a whole like for a whole hour, dude, like in a like in a bed. And it, so it was, I know it sounds like an Apple commercial. What the fuck? Like, Wait, fool, I thought you said it was a. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so it was, maniacs. I know, right? But it, it was commercials like where like uh, where like uh, this girl is like kind of complaining about her uh, her uh, college uh, roommate, and, you know, and they have okay. the, the two the beds, and they're like, I need to get out of here or something like that, and we're like, the and buy an iPad, annoying the couple, yeah, yeah. So. so then you got your money, you did uh, some commercials, then you started doing stand-up. Oh, or doing or you were already doing I was already, I was already a stand-up comedian, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which ones are the comedians that you look up to? Uh, fuck, dude, there's so many, man. 
I like Mitch Hedberg, Dimitri Martin, George Lopez, uh, Kim Masai, uh, fucking. I like Conan O'Brien a lot, man. Even though he's not a stand up, but like, just, I mean, it, like an mm. inspiration. Ronnie Dangerfield. I own Chingo, man. Like, there's, a lot, there's a lot of comedians, you know? Because I, cool. I do a lot of one liners, or like, it's like kind of like one liner one liner inspired, you know, or like quick jokes. So, yeah. Well, I see you perform. Yeah, yeah. You're pretty funny. You call yourself a lesbian fool. Ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ha. <dude. laughs> hey, bro, gender fluid, homie. <laughs> <laughs> so then. You uh, once um, what's it called? That started going. Then how did you link up with Felipe Esparza, and then you guys started doing that podcast? Oh yeah. man, Felipe! I knew I knew Felipe from like back, like because uh, he was really pretty successful on uh, he was really, he was really successful before Last Comic Standing. So like I would see him like on MySpace, and after that, um, uh, damn, Felipe. yeah, dude. Fool, you said MySpace. Yeah, are you homie. talking about aging ourselves? Bro. Puta madre. People are going to be like, what the fuck is that? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso, güey? <laughs> MySpace, bro. Oh, man, I used to go find parties on that shit, dude. Like the flyers that were there. Remember that shit? <sighs> They'd be fu- the flyers would be fucking glowing like that. Remember? <laughs> like, fuck, dude. We're really? old, fool. Bro, parties. Oh, backyard parties are sick, dude. So then you found them on MySpace. MySpace, bro. And after that, I remember I saw him. Uh, we did a show together at the Laugh Factory, like 2009. And then he was like, "How's it, how to go, fool?" Because he knew. Because uh, we were friends on MySpace. Oh, dude, that's cool. He like he talked to me, and then we became buddies because um, <laughs> child support suspended his driver's license. So, like, <laughs> and then I gave him a ride, and then uh, to a show. And after that, we just became buddies. You know, it was like, oh, cool, yeah, I'll give you rides, bro. And like, cause we we're going to like like a lot of the same spots, you know. And after that, um, I was, I remember, uh, yeah, going to go see him at last comic standing when he was doing the what's it called, the, the during during the process of the contest, you know. And yeah, it was crazy to like just like and right after he won last comic standing. Uh yeah, he started like he took me to like we the first show. No, this was in be this is during uh last comic standing when he was still competing. So uh-huh. I remember uh we took a trip to uh San Jose Improv like in my in my fucking my my do my shitty Celica bro me him damn Celica fool bro no AC bro and like no mames and then the whole time Felipe and uh, Rodrigo were complaining because like they're they're bigger guys you know I'm a, I'm a short guy and they're like dude this fucking little ass fucking car dude. But uh, it was cool. They went to San Jose, and then uh, yeah, it was cool. And since then, I mean, we've been homies, you know. So then you seen him before? Yeah, yeah. The boom. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because like a lot of comics think I'm like younger, or a lot of comics think well, like, "Oh, you look like you're 20." Fool. Gracias, Carnal. <laughs> no, but there are some comics like kind of like I, they kind of look at me or, like older, like I'm probably my age, you know. <laughs> but uh, they're like. Como que, I feel like they're like, oh, dude, this guy probably hasn't been around that long or fucking. Because I don't know, you know? But I'm like, ah, oh, dude. Well, dude. I mean, you look young. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I you look really young. Yeah, but you've been around, dog. You've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen fucking, damn, that's crazy to see somebody just from giving them rides to fucking. But he, like, he was really successful. He was like, he was really successful. Like, like he was like, like, so when he did Last Comic Standing, he already had a. He already had a like like a fan base like in LA. He had a fan, you know, like so when he was doing the contest, it was crazy because like you see all these comedians, you know, and like when Felipe go up there, bro, like all of LA was like fucking yeah, like th- th- his fans were cheering for him, you know, they and, fucking and, love him, huh? and that's because of all those years he was doing stand up like around like SoCal, you know, they que lo buscaron ahí, yeah. sabes? So like it's pretty cool, like that, like he like out of all the comics, like he was really like oh shit, like. Yeah, yeah, then yeah, uh, fan base, yeah, 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 everything, yeah. But then that that shot a bump, man. That yeah. What did you? What have you learned from him? Like, uh, like, have you learned certain things? Oh yeah. Mm. Hey, wait. <clears throat> Gracias. No, a lot of things, you know. Salud, just like, salud. Gracias. Yeah. Perdón, no, but a lot, a lot, of, a lot of positive things, you know, like uh, about comedy and just kind of like see how the business side works, and yeah, it's it, it's very cool scene and just like. His writing process and stuff like that, and just like, yeah, he, like sometimes like, uh, cause like especially like a lot of Latinos, like they will get stuck like doing like a lot of like, LA references for Latino stuff, you mm. know. But like, 
I remember like in the beginning, in the beginning going on the road and I was like all nervous going to a town like fucking Arizona. You're doing trying to do jokes about LA or stuff like that, or references. Mm-hmm. But like it's like just I, I don't know, I just like I guess learn to be more universal with jokes, you know? So like your jokes can work with any kind of crowd, you know? So better. Because it is different, right? It's a different crowd. And some jokes when you reference LA might not hit over there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So fuck. Have you ever done that when you're like you reference some fucking East LA stuff, or and they're like, "Huh, what?" Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, for sure, dude. That, that happens a lot. Or like sometimes there's like little subtle differences, even like with like Latinos, like in like Miami, Latinos in fucking New York, you know, Latinos in Chicago. It's like a little different, you know, un poquito. Depend, de- depend on the different types of Latinos, you know. Because now you're talking about not just Mexicans. Oh, you're talking about fucking Cubans. Cubans, Puerto Ricans. Dominicans. Dominicans. Yeah, Salvadorians, you know, so yeah. And their lingo is different. Yeah, it's it, it un poquito different. And even like going to, bro, I, so I went to Mexico City uh, last month for two weeks. And even over there, man, like fucking like when I was doing comedy, they would call me a gringo. Like, what? but. This whole time I thought gringo was just a white guy. Gringo to them is fucking an American born person. Like a pocho. A pocho, like gringo, yeah. Oh, el gringo aquí de, de los Estados Unidos. I'm like, what the fuck? So you went there to perform, not on vacation. Yeah, to perform, yeah. But did you go with Felipe or, no, no, or no. you just went on your own? Yeah, on my own, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. How was that, dog? It was fun, dude. I So I was there for like two weeks and I, I used it as vacation and no comedy. But it was fun, dude. Oh my gosh, it was so cool. I love my first time in Mexico City. Like it's nothing compared to like my mom, like my mom's ra- like small city in Michoacan, sabes? <coughs> Como es, es una ciudad muy grande y es fuck, oh, it's, it, it's fucking cool, dude. <coughs> well, people think it's just like a. Every time Mexico comes up, they think it's pinche rancho no dude there's like cities over there big ass cities like mexico city Guadalajara. yeah and even i got there like you try you try to take that fucking rancho shit to uh la ciudad mexico ellos son la ciudad ellos ellos no hacen eso ellos no son así ellos they're city people dude they're like they're like what the fuck like cowboy like like get ranchero no aquí no eso eso es una ciudad aquí you know it's like they're about that city life bro in mexico city really yeah dude all the ritzy people huh ritzy people people dude with money and then, dude, the areas are so different. Like, of course, the downtown areas are going to be kind of, uh, going to be ghetto, like just any like other like downtown area. Uh-huh. But it has its nice parts. And we stayed at this place called La Condesa, which is like the equivalent to like Silver Lake, bro. Mm. So nice cafes outside. Uh, can I see and breweries? You, breweries, bro. Sick has mezcal bars, hipster bars. You could, have dude. I probably found only one bar that played like fucking banda. Only one bar, and even they told me there. Eso es raro aquí. Aquí no hay bars así. Ese es el único bar aquí en la Ciudad de México que tocan ese tipo de música. I'm like, whoa. And it's it, it's crazy because I'm like, yeah. So you, it's like regentrified with Mexicans. Yeah, It's like exactly. a regentrification of kind of like what they did with Silver Lake, pero ya puro mexicano. But it's because you got to think about it. It's like, it's like hearing like people from like maybe like, 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 like cowboys from like Texas, you know, or like I see como like you won't see that kind of like stuff in the city you know like that but it, it, it was cool dude the shows in span the, they, they have a really cool comedy scene out there uh they have a, have a cool a whole bunch of cool comedy clubs and the thing about the scene in com in mexico it's fairly new bro the modern stand of comedy at penitas empezó como yo creo como unos 15 años oh shit no way so right now they are in their in the 90s so where stand-up was for us in the 90s that's where they're at right now but they have some legends too, though. Yeah, legends. But that was like different type of comedy. It's like, because back then it was like very like, como like one liners. It was like, you know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't see your kind of caminando. Uh, luego hay una mujer. And like little, like, you know, like jokes like that, como el polo yeah. polo así. Polo Be- polo. Yeah. So I went to go see polo polo. Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, shit. Uh, polo polo, Luis de Alba. Mm. Right here they had fucking Teatro Los Pinos in Southgate. Oh, yeah, yeah. I seen. Yeah, that, oh, shit. That's, I went there as a kid, dog. De veras. Oh, cool. Who else went out there to Triato Los Pinos? <laughs> who who Bro, knows I remember that shit as a kid. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, my dad, he's a big fan, fan. of uh, yeah. those, those, those. Dude, legends. we had Polo Polo tapes and cassette tapes. Wow. You guys were real fans. Yeah. Well, my dad. Shit. And I grew up to that shit. Yeah, yeah. So that's wow. why it's like, 
Shit, it's crazy. And then you're out there, and then things are evolving, right? Things they're, are evolving. They're used to that type of comedy, though, right? Now, it, the the comedy, the the modern comedy scene is more like story, like how it is now with stories. It's all like uh, this. That's not. They kind of look at that as kind of like just like it's old school, you know? It's like right. vaudeville. Okay. Because the modern stand up in Mexico started like I think like in 2008. With like more kind of like just like and, and it all started because of uh Adal Ramones. He was the inspiration really? for storytelling and just like how it is here as opposed to like you know like hay dos personas que camin you know like that. So yeah. it's like so right so right now stand up in Mexico is where stand up in the United States was in the nineties, which is crazy because like uh like even the generation from ten years ago like Carlos Vallarta uh ¿cómo se llama? uh Franco Escamilla, they're like legends now because, like, I mean, they're fucking, they're like the originators, and now it's like the newer generation of stand up comics in Mexico. So it's crazy, yeah. Fuck, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did you end up with that gig? Did, did like, do people hit you up or, did, or do you have to hit up people and be like, hey, <laughs> aquí voy a estar, and oh, this yeah. is how it goes? ¿Qué tranza, banda? Aquí voy a estar, güey. Yes. Aquí voy a estar, ¿qué tranza? Vamos, a, <laughs> vamos pa Polanco. <laughs> That's, that's a rich dude, people. That's a Chilango accent. Fuck yeah. Also, like, because uh, I have friends, I have comedian friends out there. Uh, uh, cause um, homie uh, Carlos Vallarta, he's like big in Mexico. Huh? The guy with the long hair and the glasses. Okay. So uh, when he uh, when he comes out here, uh, I'll do some shows with him, and then also uh, the other homie too, uh, Gordo Mamo. He does <laughs> shows. So uh, what's it called? So he he'll, he'll come out here, and I'll, I'll open for him. But it's it's funny because like it's like. You really need to know fucking Spanish. It's not. It's no. It's como que ah, I know Spanish, bro. Si va a estar todo bien. Van a saber lo que lo que les ando tratando de decir. You know, like nah, bro. You gotta, you gotta practice, dude. I practice, bro. Cause like the first time, one of the first times <coughs> I did Spanish and comedy. Cause, oh, the first time I did Spanish and comedy was with Felipe because he was practicing for a special in Stan, uh, in Spanish. This is before the pandemic. So we were going to Mexico, like we were going to fucking Tijuana doing shows out there, bro, like once a month. But it's you really like, bro, like I I, I like before when it, when I do a show in Spanish, I'll watch TV in Spanish, bro. I'll listen to podcasts in Spanish just to see the lingo. I watch I watch La Acapulco Shore, which is Mexico's version of Jersey Shore. No fucking bro. Way. Watch that show. They show sex, bro. It's insane, dude. <laughs> like it's like they like they show sex on <coughs> on screen because I guess Mexico is different. So yeah, I think you don't. You think you know Spanish? No, yeah, exactly. But nah, bro. Until you go to Mexico, exactly. Wait, porque ellos piensan en español. We think in English. You know what I mean? So we're tr we're translating words in Sp to Spanish. You know. So then it was tough for you being on on stage. And Mex you were uh, like, oh fuck. I'll I was ready, so like I practiced a lot, like like for like a whole two months. I was just like practicing, you know. And also, when you're out there, you're, you're talking like so much Spanish out there. You're picking up on the lingo. So, but ahora que regresé, and I have nobody to practice Spanish with, you know. I don't live at home anymore. My girl doesn't fucking. She's Filipina. She doesn't speak English. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but no, but uh, like I don't really practice Spanish that much anymore. Like since I've been back, you know. So like I'll try to like watch TV in Spanish, but it's it's hard, man. So then you definitely did not drink over there. Oh, I drank, bro. I drank every day. I drank mezcal, bro. Fuck yeah, dude. So you got on stage? No, no, I drank after. Okay, I was about to say. I would be like, oh fuck, I don't know the language that good, even though I am Mexican. <laughs> but fuck. no, but uh, no, yeah, si, si tome después. But uh, it was fun, dude. dude. And after that, we, uh, me and the other guy, Rodrigo, we did a, a radio show out there, Homies uh, Podcast. Uh, uh, Carlos Vallarta's podcast. And then uh, my friend who lives in Tijuana, who uh, we do shows with in, in Tijuana, uh, we do a podcast in Spanish with him. It's Los Podcasts del Norte, our podcast. And then. Uh, no, in Spanish? Yeah, yeah. So, That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So. <coughs> um, he was headlining a gig out there in uh, Mexico City. And he asked me if I wanted to go, and because I, mean, I was gonna be there already, and then like we yeah, did shows. So. But si es diferente, and like, I know like Spanish comedy is popping right now. Like it's like important. I feel to like do it to kind of like uh, come on, double your uh, exposure and double your shows. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah. 
Cause, Especially because you are Mexican. Si, carnal. No, pero I don't know. Like, like, because like, we're from like the same generation. So like there was, there was a time when like it was kind of like not socially acceptable to speak Spanish. Te acuerdas? Como it was kind of like, like, oh, pinche chunti. Oh, that's embarrassing, bro. Absolutely. Remember that shit? Like you never spoke Spanish at school. It was like embarrassing. Only our parents, you know? Especially when your parents would drop you off. Exactly. And the fucking paisa music was bumping. Oh, my God. So embarrassing. Bájale, bro. bájale. It wasn't as embraced or as accepted as it is now. People don't understand that shit. And you know, we, we went through that shit. We went through that shit and we went through the turning point too. And you know what was the turning point? When fucking Daddy Yankee came out with Gasolina. After that, because I remember watching the music video, I was like, this sounds like hip hop, but it's in Spanish. And after <coughs> that shit, bro, they're playing, like, it just, it just, it just talked to a generation. It talked to, like, people like us, you know, from that generation that was, like, before Me Too, before uh, Pero Like. Before there was like like before because uh, before those networks there was uh, that was kind of catering to like our generation like our I mean like uh, the our type of Latinos yeah. uh, it was like do you remember uh, Mundos on Mundos, TV Mundos I remember that Mundos was just kind of catered to like Latinos that speak English and Spanish you know mm-hmm. or that like English music and English and Spanish but Daddy Yankee changed the fucking game because after that they were playing that shit at fucking backyard parties bro because before that I was only like fucking the candy shop with those posesso. <laughs> but it's true, right? Because reggaeton, ch- dude, yeah. It was like a wave. It was it a just, wave, bro. Boom. And then and then Cumbia Kings, bro. And then fucking Chris and Angel and all that fucking. And after that, you got more also more Paisa, more like shit like that. But uh, dude, I think Daddy Yankee kind of opened up the flood floodgates for Latinos to embrace like being like, oh, fuck yeah, Spanish fucking content, Spanish music. Fuck yeah, dude. So, yeah. And look at how things have changed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. It's kind of like. Brown is beautiful, baby. Exactly, bro. Damn, dog. But we've seen the changes. The trends, bro. Yeah, exactly. Like, before all those pages, before, like, even, like, I feel like all that kind of inspired, like, it was like a trickling uh, effect of, like, kind of <coughs> kind of what is now. It Kind of like even, like, Mexican ways, you know, like, if it wasn't for that thing to happen, Maybe like Mexican ways were like start way later, or even like kind of like the content that me and Jay Valentino even conquered, kind of like that Latino kind of stuff, you know. Like, like I feel like that kind of just as like it was like a big ball, like a snowball effect that kind of just inspired everything, you know. Like, because like people were just embarrassed to be me- like Latino, man. It was crazy. You're right. And I think this wave makes people, I think it makes them feel proud. Mm-hmm. It makes them feel normal that yes. you and you went through the same shit that I went through as a kid. Mm-hmm. We have the same upbringings, the same dichos, the same this, the same exactly. that. And you're like, oh, me too. I yeah. went through that shit too. I did this. Yeah. Because you know what? Because like back then, we didn't have people like to like embrace the Latino culture because like, uh, what's it called? Like, it's so cool seeing, like, you know, Jay Valentino, Concrete, just, like, put, like putting all this, like, Latino content out there. Like, now for the kids nowadays, like, they don't grow up, like, you know, like, to them, that's all normal now. But, like, we didn't have those kind of voices, like, in the MySpace days, you know? Like, there's, like, nobody to look up to. Now there's, like, Latinos looking up to, like, fuck yeah, dude, like, this guy's funny, he's killing, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, like, it's crazy. D- am I making sense? You're making perfect okay, sense yeah, yeah. because I think it changed... The whole demographic in yeah, general. Exactly, yeah. Whether it's in music, comedy, everything. Mm-hmm, yeah, it was like, because before that, like, like I say, like, like you, you kept that shit at home, bro. You fucking, like, you went to fucking Rimo Latino with your parents, you know? <laughs> Damn, fool. You know what I mean, said Rimo Latino, fuck. You're embarrassed about that. You're embarrassed about that music, but I always just fucking do. Like, I love you, like. I listen to Spanish rock, bro. Spanish hip hop. Spanish fucking. I love reggaeton. Okay, my favorite reggaeton's from like fucking the early way, bro. Like fucking Chris we, and Angel. We seen in Yandel, fool? Yeah, those guys are those guys. Okay. Well, what about like. Casa de Leon is, <coughs> bro, you know? What about everybody's now pumped because Tucana is at Tijuana is playing a Coachella. Exactly. See, because, dude, and that wouldn't have never happened before. Like, it's all like, it's crazy to see Tucana's, uh, Tucana's you know, the Norte playing fucking Coachella. Even when, uh, Dude, like, so that, that, thanks to fucking, we gotta thank Daddy Yankee, bro. Fucking that guy, like, even if you don't like him, he's a weirdo now, you know? <laughs> but uh, if it wasn't for that fucking wave in 2005 or 2004, where, like, there wouldn't be uh, Tropicalia, bro, or, like, fucking uh, Besame. You know what? Besame? Yeah, for, what's it called? Besame Mucho. Yeah. Cause that was, like, 
because of that there's like hybrids of fucking just like i love this kind i love goth music bro i love the cure but i fucking love fucking ramona yala you know what i mean it's crazy bro like yeah dude so it's like it's a proud moment to be mexican or be latino yeah right latino now. in general just like fucking all kinds because like it's funny because like i'll talk uh to it because we're we're mexican but i'll talk to comedians or i'll talk to one, one of the homies uh, he's like in a punk band from like back in the day uh hoya rock and uh he was like he, he's fucking he's puerto rican as fuck bro from like fucking from uh the bronx bro he's like oh we grew up with the same shit as you guys bro that Mexico was like the leading <coughs> Mexico was the leading uh what's called the uh, entertainment capital of Latin America so he's like oye papi yo yo crecí con cantinflas yo crecí con fucking uh, el chavo yeah el chavo papi yo crecí a, a nosotros no 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 gusta Juan Gabriel you know I'm like what the fuck to that word like what because like you're like what but you gotta think about it. we grew up with also fucking that Puerto Rican stuff when we were kids you know our parents you know fucking Que no me digan en la quina el venado ah, or, or uh, el tiburón, you know. Well, let uh, me find out you know the dance. Bro. Proyecto, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we grew, we were exposed to like different types of Latin fucking cultures, and vice versa, they're exposed to fucking Mexican stuff, you know. Even people like the Cubans of Miami. Oh, sí, papi, a mí me gusta mucho fucking uh, fucking no no gusta las rancheras, you know, like that, dude. It's crazy, bro. It's, yeah. I just think our culture is not just in Mexico. Exactly. It's now just in Mexico. Yeah. And even do it. It's big now. It's big. And even do right now, fucking Mexico is kicking ass with fucking reggaeton, bro. Like, there's, there's, you know. there's the reggaeton artist in Mexico, which is like, it's just the Latin culture. It's, just, it's cool, dude. Yeah. I don't know. We went on into a whole fucking like. <laughs> no, this is dope. What, this what, is what, what I want to hear right here, dog. What Latin culture is, you know? Because, like, it was just, it's just crazy. Like, we had to just, like, because even, like, you know, older gen older generations, you know, because my ex girlfriend she told me that like, oh no, her uh, my ex girlfriend's uh, sister's boyfriend told me, dude, I grew up in Hanford, California, up north, bro. He's all, you fucking didn't, you didn't. Our parents didn't teach us fucking Spanish, you know, because they're embarrassed. They don't want to get, you know, they don't want to get like people talk shit to them, you know, because like, oh you're a fucking beaner, you're fucking this. Want you. you want to protect you, and then like. <laughs> and then I know like parents are like, I mean kids are mad at their parents for not teaching them Spanish, but dude, it was different times, man. It was it was crazy, you know? You know, después de echar la culpa a ellos porque te quieran proteger, como dijiste, you know? Like, they wanted to protect us and I'm just glad things are where they're at. Exactly, now. dude. So socially acceptable, bro. And just like, Fuck yeah, bro. It's a perfect time to fucking just embrace the Latin culture and like other people love that shit, bro. It's, it's great. It's just, yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's embracing it. Exactly, yeah. <coughs> so, more financial uh, advice? Nah, I want to know. Get hit by a car, bro, because I got hit by a U.S. Foods truck, bro. It was the best thing ever, dude. <laughs> How much money did they give you? It gave me $12,000. So, I, dude, I was parked. I was in West Hollywood doing Postmates, bro. I was in, in my old, my car was a like shitty, dude. It was an like Eclipse 2003, you know? Oh, what? I know, Eclipse? Bro, dude, no AC. I was parked right there in the meters. It was raining, dude. And I'm talking to my, my crazy ex at the time, the Salvadoran chick, right? <laughs> you love a fucking, I'm like, we're arguing, and then fucking, <laughs> the whole, like, fucking, the side of my fucking car's base, the back is gone, bro. And the U.S. Woods truck guy, he gets out. He's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry, dude. And it was raining. I was parked, so I fucking won, bro. Thank God I didn't die, you know? But uh, I remember, uh, yeah. You were literally parked, and the, the fucking thing just hit like, you. God, like that, bro, yeah. Fuck, that's crazy. And 12 grand? 12 grand, bro. I what got, you do with those 12 grand, bro? I got a new, my the car I have right now. I've had my car for yeah. a fucking long time, dude. That's the first car I've ever uh, bought brand new from the dealership. And the first car that I finally paid off, you know? Like, I'm, dude. I'm I'm gonna be driving this car until it dies because like it's funny because it's a little old. It, it's a 2016. That's bro. That's still fairly new. Though. Yeah, yeah. But I was scared, dude. I love not having payments, bro. You know, it's the best. You know, like I'm proud of fucking having this car paid off. So I'm gonna fucking ride this car to a fucking semuera. You know, bro. You should be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no fucking car payment, dog. I that's love amazing. It, dude. I've had car, dude. I, when I was paying out of this car and you know, other car payments and but, uh, well, I have a car payment that I don't even drive. Really? Shut the fuck. fuck. They just drafted the payment. I'm like, Mother. but I got my kids rolling in style. Oh hell yeah, His dude! Mom, you know, I mean, their mom, <laughs> little, you know. I'm like, what the fuck? Fuck. Where dude. the fuck? I don't even drive this shit. <laughs> 
So let's talk about alcohol. Yeah. And stand up comedy. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Do you get like is there like a regimen that you're like I could only drink one or I can't exceed three or four because then I'll start fucking losing track. Messaging girls. No, messaging girls. <laughs> me- me- messaging. No, it's funny because I have a On joke. stage. Yeah, I have, I have a joke where I'm like, <coughs> what's it called? When uh, when I get drunk, um, you know, you know, you know, because like, I talk to her, hey, uh, who's drinking tonight? Fuck yeah. Who's going to get fucked up and call their exes? And people are like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't, I don't, not me, <laughs> when I, dr- when I, when I get drunk, I don't call my exes, man. And I call my ex jobs, you know, <laughs> like, why'd you guys let me go? I don't fall. I could have made the company better. Fool. <laughs> no, but, uh, for me, uh, dude, like, um, the best, I'm gonna tell you the best sets I've had sober, man, nothing. Those really? are the best sets, dude. But then there's also been sets where like I, I get buzz, you know, like a nice little. You gotta be in that. It's funny because I, I just talked about this with fucking homeboy. We had him on the podcast, um, Eric Ochoa, uh, Super Ego. We had Super him. Super Ego, the perron. And we talked about it. and We're talking about drinking, and it's just like you gotta be in that sweet fucking spot, not drunk, buzz. You know, like you want to be buzz, like because if you, that's that's like the sweet creative part where you're kind of like happy, hyper, you know. But once you get once you get past that little thing. You get sluggish, you know. You start to like stu- uh, like uh, slur, slur like yeah. Th- 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 Exa- oh. yeah, exactly. So I would say the best, like if you're gonna drink, take like maybe like a a shot or like maybe like a double or like uh-huh. I see, and you'll be in the. But take it probably like thirty minutes before you go on stage or an hour before, so that way you still feel the effects of like the buzziness. But if you go too much, because I've I've gotten drunk before, dude. Like it's not fun, bro. It's like. God damn! Dude. I remember I used to host uh, the sensor room back in the day, uh-huh. and I remember they used to give us free margaritas. You know, like the margaritas, dude. What the fuck? You free? Know? Yeah, bro. Oh, it's over. Fuck. And I used to get fucked up, bro. <coughs> and I was, oh, my you know, I was, I was, dude. And I remember like the 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 secure guards, like, dude, you sucked on stage. Like, what are you doing? But I was young, bro. I was all fucking excited, you know. But uh, and I took it in count, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can't be doing that, dude. Because I remember uh, me and a. Uh, I used to get fucked up, and then with other comedians, we used to get fucked up too. John and Rocky and Flacco. And remember, we uh, we always drive to like the Carl's Jr. right there on on Valley, right there by the by the by the strip club. I think it's Deja Vu or I wouldn't know. <laughs> yes. Error, dude. And I my very thing after getting drunk was getting the big hamburger from Carl's. It was just so simple, bro. You love Carl's at one time. I, I love was, Carl's, by the way. It's dude, fire. it's delicious, bro. It's probably the best. Burger from the burger chains, you know. I think it's the best burger from the big chains. Exactly, like McDonald's and all See, that. Carl's Jr. is the bomb. Oh, so good. Argue, argue with me about it. Homies. Argue. Fuck yeah! See, they might bro. Jack, bro. I'm gonna tell you, they might Jack in the Box. Everything tastes the fucking same. You get a fucking you get fries. It tastes like the burger tastes like the fries. You get an egg roll taste because it's all cooked in the same fucking oil. It tastes. When you next time you have Jack in the Box, it all tastes the fucking same. Every fucking item tastes the fucking same. All right. You, you, what's your let thing? Me tell about? You, let, let me tell you the secret. <laughs> I worked at Jack in the Box oh, for shit. two months. It's like eighteen. They do cook everything in the same oil, dog. I knew it, bro. Same one. Well, that should taste better. No, listen, dog, dog, dog. dog. You know why I like Jack in the Box? I haven't ate it in like probably years. The buttermilk, homie. The buttermilk. The uh, buttermilk. The burger. No, the fucking ranch. Oh yeah, yeah. that's it. The fucking. Oh, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. The tacos with the gang of the fucking hot sauce. Dip it in the buttermilk, dog. Mm, hijo de that dude. I haven't had that in a while. So the debate here is <laughs> McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's, Jack in the Box, or Carl's Jr. Which one's the best? See, they all have their different strengths. You know, sometimes you want like, sometimes you're craving a Big Mac, bro. You know, sometimes. Uh, Kim Masai. Big Mac, chicken nuggets. No, uh, the oh. restaurants you. Name. Oh, okay. McDonald's, Carl's Jr. or Jack in the Box. Oh man. I would say okay, Carl's is good. Carl's it's like hearty. It tastes like it was like cooked like in a backyard, bro. 
like I like like I know girls yeah. like Carl's is good, dude. But I didn't eat McDonald's for me because it's just it's it's that classic fucking. T- I, I love a Big Mac, bro. I can't, bro, bro. I love a Big Mac, bro. For me to be craving McDonald's, fuck, wait, no mames. It's the, rare. The veras como no neta, wey. como que es lo que que es lo que activa. Ac- like I would have to be like fucking down, have a shitty day, <laughs> like fuck, dog. You know, like last week. You know, I have, I had pneumonia. Oh shit! That's why I took my head around. Okay. Like I was like, I was down, bro. Like fuck, fuck, I couldn't. My back was hurting, and last week I craved McDonald's, dog. What'd you get? I didn't though. Oh, fuck okay. okay. I'm like ni madres, way. But I wanted nice, a number one. Way. Or whatever the Big Mac, whatever the shit is. Number one, super yeah. Si- Fool, there's nothing like McDonald's fries. <sighs> Tell me about it, bro. McDonald's? Fuck. It's funny, dude. Fuck, dude. <coughs> so, okay. So, I, I went to the fucking... Uh, we we went to the, the Greek spot right here. Which one? The pita one. That's like... uh, No, not the marketplace. It's the other one. It's right here. Green it's not the... Oh, is it Green Olive? It's, it's right there. It's by the, the Ghetto 99 cent store. It's called pita something... No, bro, I don't know which one. The best fucking burger, bro. The best. Is that right? Wait, te lo juro. It's come, it tastes like umami burger. Because, okay, I like it. We're from, we're from LA. We're all from LA, yeah, right? I'm from Huntington Park, homie. We're all from Sa- Sa- uh, SoCal. So we grew up with the best Greek burgers. Because, like, every burger joint that you see, that's here, it's Greek owned. Fucking uh, Jim's, Troy's, Kemasai, uh, Fucking boulevards, boulevards, and the and the super burgers. The only one that's not owned by the Greeks is Pops and Bobos, or is one um, probably Bobos, and I think Tams. I'm not sure. I think yeah, I think Tams are more like I think black, or I have no idea. Or maybe they're just in black neighborhoods. I think. Yeah, probably. Tams is Greek. So, yeah. Okay, Pop Pops Burgers is the best. What I have to take you there, fool. Really? Okay, HP, dude. It's just bomb. I love I love me a Greek burger, bro. I love just like because I when I went to Mexico, bro. I'm sorry, bro, but they don't know how to make burgers out there. It's like it's nah, like it's like, tra- it's like they're trying not to make a torta, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, pues salió así, no sé. <laughs> like, bro, no, bro. Yeah, funny. right. Isn't that true? It's that weird thick cheese. I'm like, it's like they're trying so hard not to make a torta. Like, no, es que sale todavía así, wey. Toma. <laughs> Ponle queso, wey. And it's like, it's like, it's like different cheese. It's like fucking one big old lettuce. Like, what the fuck is this, bro? <laughs> yeah, it's like chichas. And bro, so when I came back, uh, we uh we shot a video with Eric Ochoa. We shot like uh the Cholo uh Who's Got Talent. He took me to this fucking regular burger fucking joint in Southgate. I'm not sure which one it is. Where? Which one? Ah, uh, it's on. Uh, I think. Uh, fucking no sé cómo se llama el pinche lugar, pero. Tom's. Was it Tom's, it dude? Like or Christy? I don't know what the fuck it's called. But dude, that burger I ate it slow because I missed a fucking Greek fucking you burger from that like, shit, dog. Oh my gosh! And the fucking the seasoned fucking fries, bro. All right, let me. When you eat your French fries. Do you get dressing on the side? No, nah, I'm a ketchup guy. I don't really like uh, cream right. stuff like that, dude. I get thousand dressing and I add ketchup on there and I mix it. Oh, okay, you make your own concoction. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Like this guy right here says, "I like, oh, I never seen that before." <laughs> I'm like, "Fuck, everybody does this shit." HP, homie. HP, dog. HP shit. Yeah. Oh, oh, damn, no Bell, dude. No moments, but. What about uh? How much time? About an hour and ten minutes. Go. Oh, for it. What about uh? I keep the pioneer chicken, bro. Buff uh, in Bell Gardens. I, I grew up with the one in Boyle Heights because that's the one that I lived next to, right there in Boyle Heights. So that was the place I'd always go to. But it's, it's crazy, dude. Pioneer's gotten gentrified now, bro. Yeah, it's because so. it, 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 it's going through a resurgence it's right fancy. now. Fancy. It's fancy, bro. The prices went up. I'm like, whoa, dude. It's all different in there, like. I mean, <laughs> you get like a fucking little, like they gave you like the fucking, the, the chicken and like the biscuit, like a little bag. And now it's all fucking like fancy. In a dude. box. Yeah, shit. dude. Damn, full moving on up. Throw that one away. So you grew up in East LA and then in, uh, you said, uh, fuck, what's the other city? Uh-huh, yeah. Man. So you were like in both? So, okay. I was born in Boyle Heights. What? What? Yeah, baby. BH. 
A boy of heights where the girls have nice thighs. That's right. Looking. Sorry, sweetie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what got into me. Yeah. <laughs> so, boy of let heights. Me, let me ask you this: then, since you grew up in East LA, you're still boy of heights, well, I, East I LA. So I wouldn't say I really grew up in East LA because I I moved to Alhambra when I was like eight. Okay. Oh, but okay. But I mean, you were still back and it, forth. It's the, it's, the, it's it's uh, it's like because in the part of Alhambra, it's like the board of East LA right there. Okay. Because. You know? Well, let me ask you this. Dime. What's more paisa, East L.A. or Huntington Park? Huntington Park, bro. I'm going to tell you, bro. Huntington Park, oh. dude. Oh, that's right. Because right? I think because uh, I think L.A., we're pretty close to, uh, I mean, East L.A., we're close to downtown. I don't know, but Huntington Park's got a different type of Mexican, bro. Like, I, I no sé cómo, no sé cómo explicar, pero es, es un poquito más diferente, bro. It's like, it's like, it's like. Okay, East LA has got more kind of like like the, the punk rockers, bro, like the gothic fools, you know? And Huntington Park's got more kind of like we go to fucking Picolandia. You know what I mean? Does that make <laughs> sense, bro? Like, I think East LA has like second generation Mexicans. Yeah. And Huntington Park has straight off the fucking boat Mexicans. Cause I worked, I, yeah, cause I worked like in Huntington <laughs> Park, bro. I worked at uh, at the schools there, you know? I worked in South, even Southgate too. Southgate's come well, That's where my dad lives at in. Like, Southgate's kind of like. Un poquito diferente, pero, yeah. So I just think that Huntington Park has first-generation Mexicans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is, yeah. Like we're like fucking paisa. Like. Yeah, dude. Like, I'm ordering the tacos. Ah, deme dos chiles, uh, dos chiles toreados. You go to certain places and be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, we're like it, for real Mexican. Because, dude, like, seriously, like, right there, uh, Pacific and fucking, uh, what's that street? Fucking in uh, Florence? Pacific and Florida is next to the Gallo Hero. Yeah, oh my god, Gallo Hero. Hey, dude, what the fuck? That place used to be 24 hours before pandemic, dude. Yeah, yeah, valió madre. Yeah, valió, yeah, valió, ah, yeah, yeah, valió chetos, wey. That shit was fucking good, dude. Valió chetos, homie. Valió chetos, wey. Oh, yeah. So, what shows, what do you got going? This week, uh, we're gonna be <coughs> at the Covina Laugh Factory, guys. Come on out, uh, with Eric Ochoa, the super, uh, Eric Ochoa. Uh, Pedro Flores, Alex Mijito Lex, and I think there'll be some guests. I think Jay's gonna Jay Banto's yeah. gonna stop by. Come on down, bro. Covino where the girls are cochinas. <laughs> yeah, so much. And then I'm gonna be at Reno Covina with uh, Angel Salazar, who's uh, Chichi from uh, Scarface. Get the yayo, Chichi. Oh shit! Yeah, so two she? different types types of people hanging out, bro. <laughs> like, That's fucking dope. Yeah. And and where do they follow you? To the freeway, homie, because I'm drunk. <laughs> it's so metal. <mental. laughs> Your uh, Instagram, comic Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, Bon Rizzo too. Lo, mi uh, lo mismo en todas las redes sociales, compitas. Compitas, todas las redes sociales. Martin Rizzo, amano Recio. My brother, thank Orale. you so much for stopping by, man. That was man. fun, man. Thank you. It was hella fun.